Howdy! How's everybody out in YouTube land today? My goodness gracious. Let's see here. We got a project going. I've got this buffalo engraved on this wood plaque. And try to get this camera so that it's centered up here. Now, we got to paint this. And I've got several ideas in mind for the background and for the frame part of this. See, this is routed on the edges of this piece. And I don't know. I'm going to decide as I go along. So you're going to see this in the developments. And it's going to take more than one show to do this. So we'll probably break this down into maybe maybe three shows. Maybe, maybe more. We'll see how this goes this week. Um, but I'm going to take my time with this. I'm not going to, you know, get into any kind of heated rush. I'm going to be painting this with um, ink dyes and with the um, paint, the metallic paints from Gordon Master and um, even some Gordon Master finish and stuff on this before it's all said and done. I love these Gordon Master products. And no, they are not an affiliate. Uh, they are not a sponsor. I just, I love their products. Uh, <laughs> and I, I got a whole bunch of new ones in the other day. So we're going to be using some of those. And um, we're going to start out here with some espresso on the horns and on the muzzle right there. And then I'm kind of going to go from there on what I'm going to do with colors. I'll go be going through some of my colors and deciding what I want to do. So put a drop of that down there. And I'm going to use the micro brushes. Now these, all this stuff I get from a company called Welburn Farm or Welburn Gourd Farm. You can look them up on the internet. Um, they have all the Gourd Master stuff. They've got these micro brushes and and a lot of different cool products, and, and my uh, patterns also come from Welburn. So um, you can check them out and get product there. But I'm just going to dab this on. See, that's why I like these micro brushes so good, because they're tiny. And they get in all these little teeny tiny nooks and crannies. And if you've ever seen a buffalo up close and personal, you know their horns are black. And their muzzle is also black. And their hooves are black. So we'll hit them with some black paint too. And the tip of their tail, or the, the bushy part of their tail, is also black. When I was a kid, there was a park. Well, there still is this park. It's in uh, Richmond, Indiana. And it's called Glen Miller Park. And they used to have a lot of animals at this park. And they don't anymore. They got rid of them several years ago um, and stopped having the animals there. But they had a couple buffalo, a couple bison in a big enclosed area. Great big old fences that were like, I don't know, 12 foot high fences, chain link. And those buffaloes, they were magnificent to watch. And the uh, when they went through the molt, you know, when they're shedding their hair, they would rub against that chain link fence like it was a back scratcher. And they had that fence all bowed out from their massive bodies and all their weight being pushed up against that chain link fence. And um, they, they were really something to behold. But uh, that, that was my first encounter with Buffalo. And, uh, since then, there I've found several farms around Indiana that 
our buffalo farms where they have herds of buffalo. And they sell buffalo hides and buffalo meat and buffalo horns and buffalo this and buffalo that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, buffalo have a lot of different products. Now, here's a medium brown color. And this is one they call a rich mahogany. And I'm just curious. I'm going to get just a teeny bit of that out. And I want to try that over here on a piece of paper towel just to see what that does. Oh, that's a dark brown. Yeah. Okay. So we got a medium brown and a dark brown. So I'll put this medium brown over here. Dark brown, medium brown. And let's see what else we got. I've got a pure black. Here's one they call saddle. Let me just put it dab of that down. I want to see what that's all about. Saddle color. Well, that's kind of a red-brown. Okay. There's one they call honey. That might not be a bad one to have out. I would assume honey is kind of a goldy yellow color, but Wipe the brush off real good. I don't want to contaminate that. It's a nice thing about these micro brushes. You just rub them on a piece of paper towel until they stop putting off color. And they're ready to pick up something else. Yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a gold looking color. Okay. And just kind of looking at my paints again here to see if there's anything else that strikes me. Now I've got my arm in the middle of the camera there. Here's a soft beige. I'll get that out. I don't know that I'm going to need it, but if we get it out now, we'll have it, won't we? Okay. Now, let's see. We'll go in with some of this lighter brown color. I'm going to put that up here on his top knot on his head. And don't panic when, you know, it starts looking kind of like it's blending into the horns and stuff there because we can do something about that with a little more color. We can highlight a little bit. Do some things there. Just keep rubbing that around till we get it all blended in. Places where it's a little darker, we'll go in and pick a little bit up and just keep moving it around. Okay. Got that now. I'm going to come in on that with a little bit of this honey color. Right there along those horns and down his bangs. And then I'll blend it up. Now, we're also going to need to use a little blending solution, it looks like. So we'll use their 49. This is Gord Master 49. And this is what we use to blend this. Pick a little bit of that up on the brush. 
and rub it right around there where we want to blend it in the two colors together. We don't want the light too light and the dark too dark. We want them just kind of blend in together. Just meld. Now, I'll take a little bit of this and just stroke it in there just to blend them together. Oh, I hear Fred going off. Now we got the top knot part done. We've got to do this mane back here. And this is going to be a lot like what we just did. So we're going to go in with this. Let's see, that's the mahogany, which was the darker. Let's see. Medium brown right here. Get this mane all done in with the medium brown. This wool on their mane is just as soft as it can be. It, it, oh my goodness. You would think that it would be real wiry, but it's not. And I know this because, well, I'm a spinner. For one thing, but when I was a kid and we went to the park and they they would rub against the fence to loosen up all this loose hair on their backs, you know, and there'd be tufts of it hanging in the fence. And I'm, you know, always fascinated with fiber. I would, uh, you know, get a handful of that off the fence to play with. And it was just as soft as it would, could be. It was just wonderful stuff. I'll pick up a little bit of this. Rub it in there. Blend it all up. A little bit of this one, the honey color. Right there along his back. Wipe the brush off. Grab a little of this 49. Just to blend it all in together. They're kind of a brownish red color and little highlights that's what I'm using the honey for is a little bit of highlight on them now we want to come in with I think some of this soft beige color to start with we can always go darker let's start with the soft beige Get his little ear up here. That soft beige looks kind of dark, don't it? But then as you drag it out, it's not quite so much. Now I forgot which is which. I think this is what I just put down. Check it here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little light, but we'll fix that. So we can darken him up. Get him all painted with soft beige, and then we'll go in and darken up areas that we want to darken with a darker color. But we'll get a base coat down to begin with.
Now the ink is running a little bit off of my pattern. Let's see if the 49 will fix any of that and blend it out. I mean, we will we'll deal with that later before we put a finish to it. Just keep blending it out. Paper town. You can dob some of that up off there. I mean, that ain't nothing that can't be fixed, even if the 49 doesn't take care of it, but. If we can take care of some of it now, that will help a little bit. the wood. That's the issue you run into when you're working with wood and dyes is the wood has a grain to it and it will grab and pull. But that's okay because we can fix it. There ain't nothing done that can't be fixed. Rubbing it out. This is the soft beige color that we're using here on the body. And we will be darkening that up. Where it needs darkened. Okay, now, 
this was our dark brown. We'll take some of this dark brown. I'm going to put that down here. Start down here and just stroking some of that into his fur down here on his neck and his goatee. Around the edges of his face. Just darken this all up in here. Dab that a little bit. There we go. Looks good. I'm going to come back in with a little of this and this spot up in here and darken this just a little bit. Up here on these bangs a little bit. Looks a little stripey to me. I don't like it so stripey. A little on the ear over here. Okay, we'll have to brush off. Now, let's see. Grab a little of this. Down on his legs here, some. Some of this darkened in. A little shadow in here for definition. His legs, his rump. There's a little shadowy spot in there, it needs to be colored a little bit. Come down the tail with a little of this red mahogany color. It's not going to look that stripey and stuff when I'm done. I'm going to use some 49 on it. Just blending it in. Actually, I like that mahogany on him. And I will probably use a lot more of that. Where did he go? Where did he come from? Where did he go? Read him up some. A little more 49. Whee! Two drops of it down. We'll just keep blending that in. into that brown that we put up there. So you use that 49, it just picks that right up where it's really dark. You pull it right into that brush. Move it where you need it to go.
Now, I'm going to take the paper towel and blot up here on your shoulder. There we go. Pull some of that off. It was pooling. That will help me considerably. There we go. Wood grain showing through really nice on there. Just keep rubbing it around and blending it in. Wherever it needs blended. Pull up just a little bit more of the red. Put it here on the back of him. That's a brown. There we go with red. There. We'll get this and blend it. Down his legs. Up here on the hip. Now take the paper towel, this clean section of it. We'll block that wherever it needs blotted. Pull that up. Now, red looks good, but he needs a little more brown, I think. Not much either. Just a little bit, and we're going to blend that into the red. He's looking right smart. And we see see how we have some bleeding up here around the face. Now that can be dealt with because I can come in with other colors of ink to do the background. I can go in with a darker shade of stain to do the background. Um, a lot of things that I can do to cover a lot of that where it bled. I can rub some of that out with the 49. See how it's bleeding here in the front. I'm not going to let that bother me a whole lot because, like I say, I can fix that. It's bleeding around here. And as this dries, wood's going to be soaking more up, and there's going to be more bleeding involved. Um, I know that, and I knew that going in, that there would be some bleeding involved in it. And that's why I'm saying that this is going to be a project that's going to take several days, several shows, because I will keep going in and doing different things to it. Uh, the next step on this will be to lay down the background color or whatever I decide that I'm going to do with it. And I haven't decided yet because I want to see what the ink's going to do. Um, if it bleeds a whole lot more, then I may have to go in with another color there to, um, or even maybe I might even have to go 
Well, I could go with a metallic paint in the background on that. Um, let's see, what color would be good with my buffalo? I'd probably go in with one of the... Um, let's see, that's not what I wanted at all. Um, one of these brass or the bronze or gold or silver um, on that because those are actually paints and that will cover over any of the bleeding so that's probably about what i will do there um, actually the gold will be absolutely perfect for what i want to do because I want to do all the routed edge on this in the gold leaf. And I will be doing that after I do the painting. So the, the painting of the background will be next after the ink is all dry and done what it's going to do here. And then uh, once the paint's all dry, I'll go in with the gold leaf, do the edges, and then the top portion of this I will be sealing. Um, and I haven't decided. Uh, if I'm going to do the wax or if I'm going to do the gel, um, probably the wax on this one. And I'll save the gel for another project. But uh, anyway, that's what I have in mind right now. And it's a woman's prerogative to change her mind. So who knows what I will end up uh, doing with this. You'll just have to stay tuned. I'm going to put my paints away up here. While I'm doing that, I will also say that, uh, hey, Check out the Etsy store. I've added a lot of things to the Etsy store. There's more stuff going on there just about every day now. Um, I have tons. I mean, I can't even tell you all the crafts and stuff that I've got around here that I need to get up there on it and uh, offer to you folks. And there's projects here that I need to finish and get up on there and offer to you folks. This is all viewer supported. There is a PayPal link on the front page there on the banner, a little, little tiny P. The Etsy store um, link is there that you can check to go to the Etsy store. And right beside, there's a little P for PayPal donations. It's not mandatory by any stretch of the imagination, but for folks that have expressed an interest in wanting to uh, promote my channel and uh, help me out a little bit here to buy supplies and stuff to keep being able to bring y'all videos and show you how to do things you can uh, do it through that my live show there's a super chat button that you, where you can donate you know however you want to do it um but uh those options are all available and if you like what i'm doing give it a thumbs up share it on your social media so everybody gets to see how to be crafty and do these things catch me over on twitch it's Brenda G's Designs, all one word, no apostrophe in it, nothing. Brenda G's Designs, uh, that's where you'll find me over on Twitch. And uh, live show here every Monday night at 8 p.m. Live show on Twitch every Monday at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And I do live shows on Twitch in the middle of the night, almost every night. And it's kind of catches a catch can over there. So with all that being said, there's only one thing left to say, and that's Brenda's crafty. Be like Brenda.